Hello and thank you for taking the time to watch this microanalysis. My videos tend to be quite long and convoluted, so this is part of a series where I'm attempting to squeeze a whole examination of a film into three minutes. I'm not sure why three minutes, or even if it'll work, but I like the idea of the challenge. Of course the analysis is going to be oversimplified, but I'll do my best to make it worthwhile. A Chinese ghost story is a Hong Kong ghost film, or ghost maiden film, that depicts a tax collector who takes shelter in a haunted temple and succumbs to a romance with a female ghost. It will go on to contribute to Hong Kong cinema's international recognition throughout the late 80s and 90s. Ghost maiden films, which refer to stories about single women ghosts who usually developed a romance with a living male, were a craze during 1980s Hong Kong. However, the trope found its way all over Asian cinema long before. A Chinese ghost story is technically an adaptation of an adaptation. It's common knowledge that the film is an adaptation of a story from the book Strange Stories of a Chinese Studio, but critics like Sam Ho see it more as a reimagining and modernization of the cinematic approaches used in the film The Enchanting Shadow, which was more directly based on the original story. There are actually a lot of questions regarding who practically directed the film. Despite Ching Su Tong being credited as the official director, many have speculated that the real creative direction came from the producer and heavyweight director Tsu Hark. Like he would do with the gangster comedy and kung fu films, Tsu rejuvenated the dying ghost movie by taking it down a different path, particularly its use of sophisticated special effects and innovating the formulate ghost comedy conventions that developed during the decade. Ghost comedies were popular in Hong Kong throughout the 1980s, but gradually became dependent on cut and paste filmmaking, containing a little bit of everything to appeal to the broadest audience possible, sometimes hastily combined in horror, comedy and kung fu elements, resulting in imbalanced executions. Critics have claimed that the ghost film's popularity satisfied the locals' need to strike a balance between the East and the West, assimilating Hollywood horror elements while simultaneously applying them within a Chinese context. Being a British colony meant they were immersed in both Eastern and international identities, making the ghost films the perfect postmodern art form for the ultimate postmodern society. But by 1987, the ghost film conventions became stale, and romance was considered box office poison. Most of the paint-by-numbers ghost comedies of the time used romance and sex devices sketchily. Two built the film around the love story, emphasising romantic lyricism and sensual tenderness. Also, unlike the more optimistic original story and previous film adaptation, the film ends with the lover's romance being made impossible, which correlated with Tu's desire in the mid-80s to contrast optimism and pessimism. This has been interpreted as a reflection of the Hong Kong people's frame of mind in the 80s, a time when they were approaching the 1997 handover back to China. They were proud of their achievements as a territory, but at the same time, wary of the uncertainty of their future. Tzu's contrast ethos also echoed the waxing and waning of the yin-yang, a concept inherent to Chinese spiritual beliefs. This is shown most poignantly through the maiden ghost, who despite being separated from her lover forever, is now finally eligible for reincarnation and given another chance at life. 